Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to be sharing with you how you can choose a good combination of plant butters and oils for your whipped body butter so you can end up with a lovely fluffy consistency. Um, so I'm going to share some of my tips and tricks for choosing great ingredients, great plant butters and oils so you can make wonderful and lovely whipped body butter products. Um, so let's jump right in. If this is your first time stopping by, my name is Esther and I make DIY hair and skincare videos and I also sell my products on my website and I have online formulating courses as well. I'll have everything mentioned linked in the description box. So let's jump right in. So jumping right in, one question I get asked a lot of the time is how do I make my body butter fluffy um, and not rock hard? What are my tips and tricks? I'm going to share all that with you. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that way you don't miss any new videos I upload and you can also check out my other DIY videos. So the thing with making body butter products, you need a good combination of your plant butter ratio and plant oil. But also the type of oils and butters you use makes a huge difference in the feel of your body butter, um, the greasiness, how it applies on the skin. So that right combination of your butter and oil that's really the main trick to getting a lovely fluffy whipped body butter. Before making any whipped body butter product, you need to understand the comedogenic scale. This is the foundation for all my whipped body butter products. So this just shows how likely an ingredient um, like a butter or plant oil is going to clog your skin, your pores, and it ranges from zero to five. So what does this mean? If you, if you look at these numbers, you look at the number zero, it tells you that that ingredient is not going to clog your pores at all. And this goes all the way to five. For me personally, I stick with oils and butters that are in the range of zero to two. I will never use any product for my body butter that is higher than two on the comedogenic scale. That is just my own personal preference. So this is what the comedogenic scale looks like. If you go on Google, do a Google search and type comedogenic scale, there are many options that come up. I will link the one that I referenced in this video. Um, so you can see that there's the name of the ingredient, the oil or butter. It tells you the rating um, and it also tells you what skin type that ingredient is good for, that oil is good for. Um, so that's how I do my research. Before I came up with my whipped body butter formula, I looked at the scale, researched different butter oil ratios combinations before I settled on my final formula that I absolutely love. So if you look at the uh, scale for cocoa butter, you'll see the number is four. So it has a high chance for clogging your pores. So even though it's a very moisturizing plant butter, you want to understand this rating and formulating with this ingredient because it has a high comedogenic rating. Same thing for coconut oil, very moisturizing butter, but it's also very high on the comedogenic scale. So just things to think about when you're choosing your plant butters. Butters like mango butter, um, shea butter are on the lower side of the scale. Very moisturizing butters. Um, so I typically like to formulate my body butter products with shea butter, mango butter, even cocum butter is another good one. Um, so I'm going to share some of my favorite butters with you. Um, but if you're not sure which butters to use, you can always do a Google search and just type something like best um, plant butters for the skin. And there's always so much information. There are always so many articles. So you can also research 
um, these ingredients, these plant butters for yourself. And then you can also do a small batch testing and see what works best for your own body butter formula. Here are some of the plant butters that I've used and most of them I like. Um, cocoa butter, I'm really not a fan of cocoa butter in whipped body butter products um, that I sell. Uh, but that's just my preference. Um, it's an amazing plant butter, but um, I prefer um, shea butter and mango butter. Another question I get asked is, do you use refined or unrefined? And it honestly depends on the one that you prefer. Um, I personally prefer unrefined um, because it's not as processed as the refined um, uh, butter and oil products. Um, but it honestly comes down to preference. Um, the refined um, butter and oil products usually do not have a scent and smell like the unrefined maybe shea butter or mango butter so some people prefer refined butter and oil products um, but that is something you have to test in your own body butter product and see what works best for you moving on to plant oils um, here's a list of the plant oils i've used that i like um, coconut oil i use it in my cold process soaps and not in my body butter products um, so you want to consider the skin feel how does it apply on your skin how quickly does it absorb does it leave a heavy greasy feeling on your skin does it have a scent the benefits and of course the most important is the comedogenic number the comedogenic rating um, so of course you just do your own due diligence, um, research these oils, research oils that you want to use in your body butter uh, product, body butter formula, because there are so many amazing plant oils. Um, so you have to choose what works best for you, not what I say or what I recommend. Um, unrefined or refined once again comes down to preference. Um, decide if you like refined if you don't care for a scent or a smell and use the comedogenic scale as a guide as a huge resource for you uh, because it makes the whole process so much easier when you're formulating um, your body butter uh, products so i'm going to also address making fluffy and not rock hard body butters because i've gotten asked a lot of questions about my own body butters how i came up with my blend um, it really all comes down to testing and using the right percent blend and i'm going to show you some examples shortly um, but choosing that good blend of uh, the butter and oil ratio really is what makes the difference in your body butter products because i could tell you use this percentage of this butter or this oil but you really have to understand how the plant butter and oils work in combination together um, so my first example um, of this body butter is just a random example i came up with just to show you what i mean so if you look at this formula you have cocoa butter at 60 percent shea butter at 15 percent and that's going to be a total of 75 percent for your butter amount and then you have a combination of coconut oil sunflower oil at 23 percent so this example is going to give you a, a harder um, body butter a really firm body butter because it has a high percentage of cocoa butter which is a very hard butter to use so if you use this formula you are going to end up with a hard body butter so even if you whip for 30 minutes an hour it may seem nice and fluffy at first but it's eventually going to become really hard because there's a high percentage of cocoa butter which is a very hard plant butter For my second example, um, in this formula, I have shea butter at 60% and cocoa butter at 10% for a total of 70% of uh, my butter ratio. So in this formula, it's going to give you a much softer and fluffier body butter because shea butter is a really lovely butter to use. It melts on contact, it's soft. 
it's not as hard as cocoa butter so this um, percentage this ratio um, combination is going to give you a much fluffier and softer butter the oil combination is also a light combination jojoba sunflower oil are lightweight oils that absorb quickly into your skin so when you whip this body butter combination it's still going to be um, soft and fluffy days weeks months later um, so you have to choose the right percentage that's really what makes or breaks your formula uh, it's that percentage and the combination of hard to soft butters that you combine together so that's something that really helps you when you're formulating your um, products that's this is what i do this is how i come up with my formulas and i never have any issue with my body butters turning rock hard so choosing the right combination of plant oils and butters will make or break your body butter it affects the consistency it affects how fluffy it's going to remain um, it's going to affect um, if it's going to stay um, fluffy or rock hard after a few days so that is so important and i hope you enjoyed this video you enjoyed the information i shared um, if you found this helpful please don't forget to like this video share this video and also please don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any new videos i upload and if you have any questions about what I shared, please leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your questions and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.